Well, we've been telling you about the growing number of Americans traveling to wage jihad overseas. So imagine the surprise when we learned this week that being a member of a terrorist group is apparently not enough to get your passport automatically revoked. Trace Gallagher has that for you live tonight. Trace. Megan, the issue came up when British Prime Minister David Cameron held a news conference to vent his outrage that more than 500 citizens of the UK had gone to Syria and Iraq to join ISIS and other terrorist organizations. Cameron announced that he was pushing for legislation that would automatically revoke the passports of anyone suspected of being involved in terror groups. Listen. But it is abhorrent that people who declare their allegiance elsewhere are able to return to the United Kingdom and pose a threat to our national security. So the State Department was then asked if the U.S. was also considering a measure to revoke the passports of Americans who joined terror groups. Spokeswoman Jen Psaki said there was no new push underway because the U.S. has long had the capabilities to cancel passports of Americans who plan to do the country harm. But in those cases, the State Department would have to, would have to consult with lawyers. When she was pressed specifically about Americans who team up with terrorists, she said this. Is joining or fighting for a designated terrorist organization a something for which you can automatically lose your passport? You, your passport can be revoked. Is that well? We, I, again, this is information that we would have to consult with uh, I understand, legal authorities on. It's maybe, not maybe, as black and white as that. But apparently it is that black and white because when the question was posed to Deputy State Department spokeswoman Marie Harv, it went like this. Listen. Simply being a member of a designated foreign terrorist organization isn't grounds. Does not automatically mean your passport will be revoked. That is correct. Okay, so, there's so for now, Americans who have joined ISIS, and there are many, could easily be allowed to get on a plane or ship and come home. Megan. Thank you, Trace. Joining me now with reaction, Tom McInerney, a retired lieutenant general in the uh, re lieutenant general in the U.S. Air Force and a Fox News contributor. I I'm all I'm flummoxed because I don't understand how you can just come right back into the United States just because I'm you flummoxed. have an American passport if you're a member of ISIS, General. I'm flummoxed too, Megan. I, I cannot um, believe this <clears throat> that this is in fact true, and I understand that Michelle Bachman is about to uh, put in new legislation, a bill that would change this, but let's look at it this way. If you are a member of a terrorist group, you are aiding and abetting the enemy. Aiding and abetting the enemy is treason against our Constitution. So it would seem to me that automatically, even without having a, a, a trial, that your passport should be revoked. Automatically. Period. And then right. You Automa can go that's the, the key. Process. Automatically, because they, they talked about how well the Secretary of State he's got he's got discretion. He's got the ability to revoke passports. You know, depending on the circumstances. Why why is it a discretionary thing? You're part of ISIS. It's done. Well, Megan, that's been part of our problem. We don't know our enemy we're fighting. <clears throat> Sun Tzu said, "Know thy enemy." We are fighting radical Islam, an ideology that I've said before in this program that is evil, as evil as Nazism, fascism, and con communism. Let's look at it that way. And we wouldn't let Nazis in World War II come in if they had even, and we had Americans with passports that were Nazis. Uh, they were immediately arrested or tried or whatever. The fact is, is that's the way it ought to be today. But the, but the problem, General, is that, you know, if you were a member of the Nazi party, that was identifiable. And, and if you are a radical jihadist, it's not necessarily identifiable. The, the members of ISIS don't run around with carrying cards. And so we're going to get into a situation where we start saying, you're out, you're out. You from Minneapolis who went over there to Syria and now you've been in Iraq, you're, you're suspected, so you're out. And then the guy's going to hire the ACLU and file a lawsuit and say, what do you mean? I had relatives in Syria. I wanted to go study the Koran. Well, that's our challenge. And that's why we need to have legislation that clearly delineates that, that you don't go to uh, Syria to study the Koran and be a member of a terrorist group. And so there will probably be more compelling evidence that will have to uh, support that particular position. But we are in a very gray area, and I think that we've got to get it corrected quickly or we're going to have more cases like Major Nadal Hassan, who is still trying to 
charges against him were workplace violence. Mm -hmm. And he's yelling out Alua Akbar as he drills 14 people. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a problem and we need to get it fixed. And it, it's, you're spot on to highlight it so American people can see how ridiculous this is.